Hello, once again, Jose Rodriguez here. Let's do something really strange and different. Most of us print on paper. Paper is opaque. You would never backlight it, but this stuff you do. So let's go ahead and try this on our 8550. Let's see how well that works. Let me show you what this looks like. This is from Office Depot. Okay, and you can probably buy similar stuff in your local office supply store in on on ebay and probably much amazon more than likely as well so we'll take a look at one of these sheets so one side is very very smooth the other side is rough has a rough texture that is the printable side this little white edge that's a grabbing edge in other words for the transport rollers to grab so you're going to load this with the printable side, the rough side facing you on the printer. I already have one loaded. So we'll go ahead and jump into Q image. We'll prep an image up, probably one of my little paintings as well. And uh, we'll go ahead and print it and see how that comes out. Then we'll have to view it over a sheet of white paper, obviously, because that's the way it's going to be viewed if you show it to someone on a, on a light box with an opaque piece of uh, well, it's a plastic, right? So. Let's put this down here. We'll jump over to Q image and we'll be right back. Okie doke, so I have this bright, beautiful image right here of a storefront, the second floor of the store that is, that I turned into a painting. Now, again, we'll go through the process. Epson ET8550, premium glossy paper this time, letter size. And of course, here we're going to choose a profile for glossy. It's already there. It already chose it for me. All I had to do was basically go here and suggest paper profiles because I'm using basically letting Q image handle this as if the driver was doing it on its own. Guess what's on the top? Premium glossy profile. So I chose that. And OK, that is it. We're going to go ahead and print. Now, this is going to take longer because it's glossy so it's going to use a higher quality and that means it's going to probably take twice as long as the previous one that you saw me do let it load okay i'm going to go ahead and make sure that the printer grabs that correctly it just woke up again and it did it fed it just fine that's what the little white strip is for it pretty much guarantees that it's going to be grabbed uh, the way it should be and not, you know, jam up or something or skew it. So like I said, this is going to take a bit longer. So say you're using, um, remember the old school overhead viewer uh, projector? Yeah, that kind of thing. So this is really good if you want to create some kind of backlit uh, display for something. If you have a big printer then you can print even larger ones as well the idea here is to make sure that you end up with the correct density something that's going to be backlit literally has to be a higher density otherwise it's going to look dull that's why when you view something on your screen and it is backlit it's very very strong stronger than what that paper is going to be able to reproduce is going to be more pop in other words you're going to see a brighter more intense rendition of that image than what anything on paper will be able to produce because it's not being backlit this is going to be backlit okay take a look it's taking forever here that other one was would have been already almost halfway done I have here some Staples Photo Plus paper. Staples is a house brand. I don't know who manufactures this paper, but it's really, really good. And that will be shown on the next video. So keep an eye out for that. It's coming and it's looking good too.
Got my sheet of white paper here, ready to roll. Wow. Now this is going to be a little bit different the way you handle this once it emerges. This appears to be a swellable surface coating, meaning that it becomes very tacky and, and a lot wetter than a regular paper because you're printing on plastic and the ink has a harder time evaporating and drying quickly. So one good thing is that because it's, it's swellable, that ink will be encapsulated in that gelatin coating and it can no longer be affected by ozone, only light. And as long as it's being illuminated by a light source that has a very low UV output, it will last a very, very long time. Once it emerges, you, you kind of look at it and it looks like it's, it's 3D. It looks like a bar relief type, uh, like an etching, because the areas that have a higher density of ink sort of swelled a little bit more than low density areas. I think that's it. So we're going to very carefully, don't touch it. Here it is right here. I'm going to put it on a sheet of paper. I'm going to put it facing up. And again, yeah, this is still very tacky. Look at that. That is lovely. Now, what else can you do with this? Well, there is a group of people out there that like to create digital negatives. Basically, they, they take their, their images. Maybe they get a real negative. They don't have an enlarger like we used to have in dark rooms. They digitize that negative with a scanner. Open it relatively wide in your editing application and you print that negative. In other words, you do not convert it to a positive. You print it as a negative and then you go in the dark room and literally contact sheet that film, which is a negative, onto photo paper, which then creates a positive. They even go to the extent of coating their own paper manually with certain light sensitive type chemicals to create very, very interesting results. I tell you, there's a lot of this going on now. There's been kind of a revival of the old photographic processes. So let's take a look at this one more time. I don't know whether you can see that weird look. You can see it, it's kind of a translucent look. But again, this will be backlit and it will be seen in all its glory, okay? Now you can also flip this over. You can print it backwards. In other words, you can flip it optically and then print it so that then you can lay this down this way. And it will then be viewed on the correct uh, orientation. But that side is way too glossy for me. Okay? So it's, it's your choice. Um, can you spray these? I don't know whether that will handle spraying. Again, that's another thing that sucker back there, that printer can do. And again, like I stated in previous videos, I'm trying to find something that thing cannot handle. So far, so good. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to print on that super glossy Staples paper, which is actually quite low in cost, comparatively speaking, to say something like Epson or Canon equivalents. All right, we'll be right back. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And until the next time, happy printing, everyone. Bye-bye.